I'm Keep Jewel, and this is Comic Smack, your weekly, daily, all the time, anytime comic show where I give you your fix of everything you need to know from the world of comic books and superheroes. And on today's show, we are taking a closer look at Batman White Knight issue number one in a topsy turvy else world where up is down and black is white. Can the Joker save Gotham City? Well, let's hop on in together and find out, shall we? Alrighty then, so as we open on the comic, we check on in with Arkham Asylum. Batman is locked up as an inmate and he is met that night by none other than Mayor Jack Nathan. Napier, aka the Joker. So yeah, if you weren't sure we're in an Elseworlds, we're totally in an Elseworlds right about now. But how did we get here, you might be asking. Well, for that, we flash back. It seems that after one of the Joker's many clown-themed crime sprees, Batman was hot on his heels, destructively so, in fact. This is a Batman who is shown to be quite unhinged, who has very little respect for human life. In fact, he almost kills a security guard crashing into him with the Batmobile. Even Batgirl is scared of him. Speaking of Batgirl, love the re designs in this book. Everyone looks really cool. Batman manages to track the Joker to his newest hideout, which just so happens to be a warehouse filled with a bunch of pharmaceuticals earmarked for destruction. The Dark Knight and the Clown Prince get into one of their oh-so-classic fist fight slash philosophical debates, only this one seems a lot more mean-spirited and a lot more violent. The Joker says that the only reason Batman can't bring himself to kill him is not because he thinks he's better, not because he has a code of ethics or a line he won't cross, it's because deep down he needs the Joker, needs his villains to justify his own psychopathy. And that ultimately Gotham would be better without Batman in it. Batman does not take these words very lightly and as such begins to brutally and savagely beat the Joker before shoving a bunch of pills down his throat. Now, usually this would just be another day at the office for Batman, but not this time. A mysterious blonde woman who may or not be Harley Quinn just so happened to film the entire ordeal. She also just so happened to catch Jim Gordon and the rest of the GCPD watching as this vigilante beat the crap out of this criminal, who in the eyes of the law has never actually been found guilty of killing anyone and is considered to be mentally unstable. The video goes absolutely viral and it has a butterfly effect all throughout the city. You see those pills that Batman shoved down the Joker's throat? Well, they seemingly worked on him. And he says that once he's out of traction, he's going to sue the GCPD and the city for all the damages. This means the mayor is absolutely furious at Gordon right now, how can he claim to be a cop who is hard on corruption in the police department when he is so willing to let a vigilante do his dirty work for him? This is, well, I mean, you know, when you put it that way, Mr. Mayor, it's kind of hard to deny it, isn't it? The Joker, now choosing to go by his movie moniker, Jack Napier, slowly puts together his case, writing, studying, working. And when he's done, he actually presents his findings directly to the mayor and the police who would just really wish he shut up. It seems that they're willing to to wave their hands and make all of this go away, but Napier legitimately wants to fight them. This isn't just about what happened to him, he wants to make a statement about Gotham City and especially about Batman. He says that he loves Gotham City and that if anything is ever going to become better, they need no more Dark Knights, no more Shades of Grey, they need a White Knight to be their hero and he plans to be that. So that was Batman White Knight number one everybody and overall it's a fairly interesting setup for an Elseworlds story. I mean as comic fans we all love to joke and speculate about just how how sick in the head Batman is and how messed up the legal system in Gotham really is, this book just kind of runs with it. And then of course there's always the idea in the back of our head, does the Joker really mean what he's saying and doing right now or is this all part of some super huge elaborate plot, who knows? I mentioned how much I liked the redesign work before and I think it bears reiterating, this is a really pretty, really stylized book with some really cool stuff going for it. I would give this one an 8 out of 10 and I'll most definitely be checking back for issue number 2. We're entering a golden age of Elseworlds right now. And with that everyone, that's the book. I hope you enjoyed it and if you did, why not check out some of these other videos? Then you can follow me on social media at Cape Jewel for updates and if you like my work and want to support me, you might want to become a patron. For as little as a dollar a month, you'll get exclusive access to videos and content before anybody else. You can find those and other links right down in the description. So until next time everyone, this has been Cape Jewel. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you all again later. Bye bye